Hi, I'm Semen Yakov. This presentation is entitled Commonality Aspect of Switched Capacitor Converters and Switched Capacitor Filters. There are some relevant videos in my YouTube channel. Here are the links, and I'm going to also to print these links at the page of this video that you are now watching. There is a disclaimer here. Please note that the devices that are shown here are just for educational purpose only. There is no endorsement or recommendation implied here, and I am not affiliated in any way with the manufacturers uh, of these devices. And also, please be aware that there are other vendors that offer devices with similar functionality. So we are concerned here with two technologies, you might say, switch capacitor converters and switch capacitor filters. The here is a unit, an IC unit, and this is the internal structure or simplified circuit diagram. And here is a switch capacitor filter uh, already programmed to behave like a very sharp here dropping low pass filter. And I'm going to discuss the common feature of the switch capacitor converter, switch capacitor filter, using first principle, that is I'm not going to rely on any available equation, but rather to develop the relationship from the basic. And also I'm going to discuss the importance of the R equivalent element in both cases. So what are switch capacitor converters? I'm going to show it, explain it by an example. Here we have the inner circuitry, the simplified circuitry of the unit, the IC that I've shown earlier, that's made by Maxim. This is a times two converter, that is the output voltage is twice the input voltage. This is done by having the so-called flying capacitor and switches which are connecting this flying capacitor to the input and then to the output. And here is a simple way to explain how does it work. We have a flying capacitor which is on one phase connected to the input. And then on the second phase, we connect the flying capacitor to the output in series with the input. This voltage here is the same thing. These are input voltages, the two points for the input voltage. So in this case, if we assume that the charging came to completion, then we will have a capacitor voltage which is equal to V in. And then we connect this capacitor which is charged in series with V in. So therefore V out is V in plus the voltage across the capacitor which is V in. So we have V out is twice V in. So this is a times two converter. This voltage is called the target voltage. This is in fact the open circuit or no load output voltage. That is the voltage that you'll get with no load at the output. In, in this particular case, the target voltage is twice V. However, if you load the unit, you'd expect a drop. Conventional model of the circuit is something like a Thevenin equivalent circuit. This is the target voltage. And then we have an internal resistance that emulates the behavior of the unit. This is now an average circuit. They, there's no pulsation here. Uh, it's average current. And we understand now that when we load this unit, then obviously there'll be a voltage drop and also there'll be some losses. The efficiency will drop. And now we'd like to see how we can develop uh, the expression for RE. Before that, we have to recognize the fact that the shape of the current when connecting a voltage to a capacitor, as we are doing here at the input and at the output, when we are connecting the voltage, <coughs> the capacitor to the voltage, then we can have one of three waveform for the current. If the duration of the switch on is long enough, then this process will come to completion. We call it a complete charge. And the capacitor, of course, will be charged to the uh, voltage source. On the other hand, if the duration is very small, uh, we are like in here, then the current will be about constant and uh, the capacitor will not reach the value of the input. 
and the current will be just about constant. Let's start with this part here, and then we'll move to other parts. So the strategy of developing the model that I'm going to use is like this. Starting with the unit here, we understand that there are some charges being pumped in, moving around, and then coming out of the output. So I'm going now to look at one switch instant, could be two switches in series, but one phase of the process, and to find what is the loss, the energy loss in this process. Once I have this loss, I can relate it to the loss of the model when there is an RE, and from this I can get the value of the RE. Now I'm going to do it in a way that is independent on the operating point, and that is to express everything as a function of delta Q rather than voltage, which is usually done. Now the problem is that with voltages, that these are changing. Well, if you look at the delta Q, then the relationship are really firm and they do not depend on the operating point. So here it is. Let's start with the loss of the case that we have a voltage source, a capacitor with zero initial voltage, which is connected here until these are equalized, that is the voltage of the capacitor reaches this value. Now the energy coming into the circuit will be this delta Q that we are talking about times V1. Now I don't want V1, so I replace it by delta Q over C from the definition of a capacitor, of course. So I'm getting that the energy coming in is delta Q square over C. Now the energy coming out is of course C V1 square over two. The capacitor was charged to V1. Again, I'm replacing this with delta Q, so I'm getting delta Q square over 2C. Now, the loss then is the input, the input energy minus the output energy. And this is the input, this is the output, and here is the loss. So each instant of switching of this switch, we are losing this amount of energy. Now, in the case of a switch capacitor, we have many different situations. It could be a voltage source with a capacitor which is charged to zero or any other voltage. We can have two capacitors, one zero. We have two capacitors, one is one voltage, the other one is another voltage. So what I'm going to do next is to take this, which is the general case, because uh, this case of a voltage source is like a capacitor with infinite capacitance. So this is the general case. I'm going to get the energy loss for this general case. And I'm going to do it in a, again, a simple way without too much uh, derivation here. And in fact, the idea is to take this general case and to bring it to the case that we already discussed and we have the solution for it. And the way I'm doing it is taking this charge capacitor and describing it by a model which is a capacitor with zero voltage on it in series with a voltage which is the initial condition. Once you do this then you combine the two voltage sources and the two capacitors to one source and one capacitor, these are two capacitors in series, and lo and behold we got the same thing as we got before, a voltage which is charging a capacitor and we have the result, which is delta Q square over 2C. In this case, however, it's the equivalent resistance. In this particular case, it's the, uh, it's the two capacitor in series. Of course, could be other situation. And of course, if one of them is a voltage source, it will be one capacitor. We are now ready to look at the losses of the total circuit. Since delta Q one direction and delta Q the other direction is the same because the, the average current through the capacitor is zero, it's steady state. Therefore, we have the same losses on one direction, same losses for the other direction. So this is now the total energy loss of the circuit per cycle, switching cycle. 
Now, the power loss will be the energy times the frequency. Now, we are ready to find what is Re. We are equating the power loss here to the power loss in the model. The power loss of the model is I average here times Re. Now, this is the average current here. And of course, it can be related to the delta Q by the fact that we have packets of delta Q coming out and the average current will be delta Q times the frequency. So we can find what is the power dissipation of this Re as a function of the, this delta Q. We know what is the power dissipation here as a function of delta Q. We equate the two, this is the model, this is the actual power dissipation, and we got the result. Lo and behold, we see that Re in this region that is uh, complete charge is 1 over frequency times C. Very interesting. It's well known, but I found it in a sort of a different way. And we see again that this is independent of the switch resistances as long as we are staying at a complete charge regime. Now the question is what is happening in the other region and let's go here to the no charge situation. Here we have a constant current during the switch on time. So at the output we see these packets coming out, delta Q. The average is this value. Let's call this IP. And on the other hand, the capacitor sees these currents charging, discharging, charging, discharging. This is this again IP. This is IP value here. Now the power dissipated in the model is the average current which is IP over 2 times Re, IP over 2 squared times Re. In the model we have this instantaneous current so the power dissipation is IP square times say R1, so one phase but since it is 50% of the time, then we have to divide it by 2. So this is now the power dissipation of the circuit. IP squared times R1 plus R2 over 2. So now I am comparing the power loss of the model. So IP squared over 4 times RE. This is the averaged squared RE and then to the power dissipated in the circuit itself and I come up with a value which is Re is equal to twice R1 plus R2. I can very nicely plot this thing in this log log scale since we have here 1 over Fc in a log log scale it's a power F is the power of minus 1, so it's a slope of minus 1, it's like a 20 dB per decade you might say, this is log and this is log, the frequency and this is the resistance. And then as we reach higher frequencies we are locked to this value, 2 times R1 plus R2 which is 4R in the case of R1 equal to R2. So if we are at low frequency this is the behavior, at high frequency this is the behavior, if the resistance of the switches is larger, then this line will come up. Now the partial charge is somewhere in between. I'm not going into the exact derivation of this point, but it's clearly the intersection of this and this. So whenever this reaches 1 over Fc reaches this value, then we move to this line. Now I am going to the aspect of the switch capacitor filter. Now the unit that I've shown at the beginning is this unit here. It's a general purpose unit that you can connect to mimic any transfer function or a filter if you wish. It is based on the fact, which I'm not going into, and again I gave a reference video for that, that you can build any transfer function from blocks of integrators. These are integrators and by interconnecting these you can generate any
transfer function that you wish, almost any. And um, this is done by interconnection of uh, these units, especially by feedback and uh, actually changing the gain, you might say also. And here is an example here, the one branch here, which is connected to realize a second order filter. And the nice thing about it, that you can get here both the uh, low pass and you can get the notch uh, as well as the bend pass filter. So this is very handy. Uh, you can program it to any given filter, very sharp filters. And we are going now to look at the relationship between this technology and what we just talked about, about the switch capacitor converter. Well, the basic block of this switch capacitor filter is an integrator, which is usually built around an operational amplifier, and the transfer function is 1 over S, S is the Laplace uh, variable, RC. Now, this is an analog, and here is the implementation with a switch capacitor converter. That is, we have here two switches with two clocks, which are not, of course, uh, overlapping and this is indeed this case here and we now recognize a switched capacitor and we know that this can be described as a resistor and the value of the resistance is 1 over frequency times c in the case of a complete charge so by having these two switches and a capacitor we can mimic the behavior of a resistor so this is the similarity here between the two technologies. Now, the transfer function of this unit with the switch capacitor is then, I replacing now RE by 1 over FC, and I find that it is, this should be C sub 2 and C1 divided by the plus variable times the switching frequency. This is very nice because of two basic reasons. One is that by changing the switching frequency, you can actually move the behavior. You can actually move the behavior of the operational amplifier, but this you can actually move the location of the poles and the zeros of the filter. So you can actually have a notch filter or a bandpass filter that you can move around by changing the frequency. But there is another benefit here because the transfer function is a function of the ratio of two capacitors. Now in a monolithic implementation, very difficult to have a accurate capacitor, precision capacitor, but it's much easier to get a ratio of capacitance which is constant because the capacitance is a function of the area and the area is pretty much constant so maybe small variation in the process and then the two uh, capacitors are going through the same process so from batch to batch it will be the same and also the temperature tracking will be also very good so this is a gain gain situation and therefore the switch capacitor filter is kind of a handy device. Now let's take an example here. Suppose the capacitance is 5 picofarad, switching frequency is 1 megahertz, then this is 5, 10 to the minus 12, 10 to the 6. We see that the equivalent resistance will be 200 kilo ohm and 5 megahertz will be like 40 kilo ohm, which is nice uh, that you can have a range here. Obviously you may be able to go to over a longer range, but again, there are some problems which I'm not going into, like sampling and noise, and this is issue which I'm not discussing here. So now if I'm comparing the two technologies, we see that in the case of switch capacitor converter, we have power processing here, we have signal processing. Variable frequency is used in both, one for voltage gain, we can change the gain of the switch capacitor converter at the expense of, of course, losses and efficiency. Here we can move the poles and zero. Here we use usually moderate switching frequency in 
a monolithic implementation, you, go, you can go to very high switching frequencies. Here, the capacitor will be in this range, while in the implementation of a filter, uh, you use small capacitor because uh, the area is expensive and the, you like to have small area for the capacitor. And then here we have the concerns of efficiency, of course, and as we have seen in this case, this is not a big issue. So what are the conclusions here, or what are the final remarks that we can make? Uh, is that RE plays a major role both in the switch capacitor converter and switch filter technology. What I've done in the first order approximation, very approximate, very intuitive, and obviously I've ignored many, many aspects of the issue. For example, the ESR of the capacitor, the inductance, uh, switching losses, and other issues which I have not uh, covered. And also in the case of the uh, filter, there are some sampling rate issues. There's also an issue of noise. So. This we're not covered because this is a short video, just a primer on the subject. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.